Welcome back to NBA Cinema. So we got to talk about J.J. Redick and his introductory press conference. As we're going to just touch on the main topics that's been talked about over the last few weeks. J.J. Redick, you know, said all the right things in his uh, introductory press conference. But, you know, we don't believe everything he said. But he did handle himself like a true professional and said what he was supposed to say up at that podium. And also had Rob Palenka there to answer some questions you know, about the validity of his hiring, his relationship with LeBron James, how all these things played a major factor in him securing that job. Now, J.J. Reddick brushed those things off, and he brought up something interesting that I didn't even think about in this process. You think back, you know, the Lakers openly tried to pry Coach K away from Duke several times, and those were things that he mulled over at the time, but he didn't ever go. You know, he, he I guess his, his experience with the NBA was enough to – coach Team USA for him, but not do that full time because Duke is the program he built and he wanted to st like finish where he started at. He was the king there. No need to embrace that Lakers job if you have a program like Duke, which you are the reason that it is what it is today. So uh, J.J. Reddick spoke, and we're we going to go around to different things. So first we're going to talk about, uh, you know, LeBron James podcast and the input uh, that maybe that had on J.J. Reddick getting a job. Let's listen to what him and Rob Palenka had to say. Let's peep. Specifically, obviously, J.J. and LeBron, they had have had a podcast going since March. Even if it wasn't direct conversations with LeBron, how, if it did, did that podcast factor into the process of the interview and, and all of it? I think at the core of a, a really good NBA head coach, um, one of the core, core necessities, especially with today's player, is communication. And I think J.J. is one of the best basketball communicators out there, period, hard stop. Um, anyone that's paid attention to what he's done and built and his interaction with players and coaches and executives, um, he's special at that. Um, in terms of the involvement with our captains, with this coaching search and the coaching process, I think um, you know, you're asking a question about LeBron. Um, he was very supportive of our organization in this process. And that's a different word, and I want to be mindful of the word, than involved. So I would say, say it again. LeBron was very supportive of us in our process, but chose not to be heavily involved, and we respected that. Um, Anthony Davis, our other captain, um, chose to be very involved and was very involved. I, I talked to him throughout the process and got a lot of help and wisdom from him. Um, and he was very excited um, for today. That you have a very close relationship with LeBron. He could have done a podcast with anybody in the world. He chose to do it with you. What was his advice to you throughout this whole coaching search process? He didn't provide any advice. Um, LeBron and I did not talk about uh, the Lakers job uh, until wow. Thursday afternoon, uh, about 30 minutes after I was offered the job. Uh, and that was very intentional on both our parts. Um, you know, I, I knew I had an understanding that he did not want to be involved in this. Um, and for me, I didn't want to go down the path of hypotheticals uh, with someone that I consider a friend and, and someone that I have a, a great amount of respect for. So for, for, for us, it, it just came down to literally Thursday afternoon. And, and I talked to him for about 15, 20 minutes and got off the phone. That was it. Okay, so both of the guys up there at the podium they said all the right words. You don't ever want to give the public too much. But to think that we believe that J.J. Redick and LeBron James had no communication about him being the head coach while having a podcast together, talking strictly basketball, and, you know, dissecting the Lakers' playbook and how players were used and all this type of stuff, I think that's bogus to believe that we're that dumb. Um, but, again, it's a – Press conference, you get up there at the podium, you don't say that you guys were um, in cahoots with him becoming the next head coach. I get it. You know, I definitely get it. But that leads one to the next question. Okay, since the podcast had nothing to do with it, you already see how it's viewed, what people are going to say about it. Will the podcast continue? And J.J. had an answer for that. Let's check out what he said. I am, uh, for the time being, and hopefully it's a very, very long time, uh, I am excommunicated from the content space, so I, there would be no podcast 
Um, we'll, we'll do something uh, when I have a breather uh, from what we have coming up. I'm going to be drinking out of a fire hose for the next month. But at some point, uh, we'll, we'll just do something for all the people that listened, and we'll have a small little video. But I, I'm, I'm done with podcasting for now. So JJ was clear there. He won't be doing the podcast going forward, and I think that's a good move. You're going to be coaching the Los Angeles Lakers. It'll be enough content out there, enough other podcasts out there, uh, you know, critiquing your every move and everything. Because this is going to be under a microscope, and rightfully so, because there's been a lot of other coaches deserving. Now, do you want your first job to be coaching LeBron James and the scrutiny that comes with coaching both him and the Lakers and that championship expectation that the organization has no, you probably don't want that to be your first job. But J.J. Reddick, you know, he was able to come in, and he's not a guy who um, was even on a staff. So, you know, you can come in swinging for the fences like he's about to do. Uh, but at the same time, you know, obviously he has a chance to get some wins under his belt. Having A.D. and LeBron, it's going to be about schematically what does he do with the team and, you know, how players are used and how much they allow themselves to be used. Uh, but – you know, J.J. has heard a lot of the criticism talking about he hasn't been a head coach. Uh, you know, Sam Cassell, others should have got the job. And this is what he had to say about it, man. He was talking about uh, about all the outside noise and what he really wants to get accomplished coming in with his team. Let's check it out. Um, it's a valid question, and I've certainly heard everything. Um, you know, it's it's been a really interesting uh, six weeks or so. Um, just in terms of, uh, you know, being part of the engagement farming uh, industry, you know, it's been really interesting. Um, however, I, I, I don't really have a great answer for your uh, question because I, I really don't give a fuck. Like, honestly, <laughs> I want to coach the Lakers. I want to coach the team. I don't want to dispel anything. I don't. I want to become a great coach in the NBA and I want to win championships, and I want my players to maximize their careers. This job was about the Lakers. This job was about the Lakers, and it was about LeBron James, Anthony Davis, two of the greatest players ever. Um, I've been able to do some incredible things in my life. I, I really have, I mean, I, Rob knows this, like Monday night, I called game five of the NBA Finals. Thursday, I'm in Cameron. One of my sons is playing at Duke camp in the practice facility. The other son is in Cameron Indoor Stadium. And I'm on the phone with Rob and Jeannie committing to this job in the Duke Hall of Fame room. I've gotten to do some amazing stuff in my life, right? This might be the best. And it's, I, when I think about like this job in particular, it's not just about getting the job. What, what I wanted to do was do the job. I wanted to coach the Los Angeles Lakers. And, uh, and so that was, that was where I landed on pursuing this versus you know, potential other opportunities. So like I said, man, J.J. Reddick had all the right answers. And when he's talking about those other opportunities, obviously the Charlotte job is one that came up and he was linked to, but didn't fo didn't really follow through with it. said he didn't do the second interview. I didn't want to take too much of the introductory press conference. You could check it out on the Lakers channel. Any of those local L.A. Uh, news stations, they were recording it. They were there, uh, media for that event. But uh, J.J. Reddick touched on a lot of the major topics, so – now we just have to see, um, you know, how he coaches this team. Somebody even suggested that he coaches the summer league. And you know what? I don't think that's a bad idea for him. I really don't. You know, just to get, you know, just, just to get the feel of coaching pro players and, you know, running what you're going to run on a much lesser level, you know, and, and lesser IQ players. You Obviously, LeBron and AD ain't going to be out there, not even, you know, Rui, D'Angelo Russell and all those guys. You know, it, it'll be guys who maybe not make the NBA or some guys at the bottom of the bench, maybe one or two slip through the cracks and get into the rotation this season. But, um, you know, that would give him an opportunity to give him some head coach experience. So I would like to see J.J. Reddick maybe even, if he don't do it the whole uh, summer league, do it a few games. You know, I know that's typically for like um, 
you know, assistance or whatever. But I'd like to see him do it since he has zero experience at that level. I don't think it could hurt him. Um, you know, so it's all over now. Dan Hurley's not the coach. They chose J.J. Reddick. He is the Lakers coach. It is what it is. All the think pieces around it wondering if he'll get the job. That's out the window. Uh, so now Lakers Nation, I kind of want to know how y'all feel in the comment section about J.J. Reddick becoming the next head coach. Yeah, I mean, it's a breath of fresh air, right? And we're going to see, um, you know, how, how this all plays out, man. Uh, this is definitely LeBron's guy. I don't think anyone is dumb enough to not believe that. Um, at the same time, you know, J.J. Reddick, this could go really bad. If you start out like 4-20 and 20 or, you know, something like that, you're going to be out the door. You ain't going to get the whole year like Monty Williams did with no Lakers. So uh, we'll be looking at that. We'll, we'll see how this plays out, man. Let me know in the comments how you feel about it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to next time. Peace.